Welcome to Lesson 2-3, Dividing with Decimals. Today we're going to talk about how to divide whole numbers by decimals, and how to divide decimals by decimals, and be able to solve problems involving dividing with decimals. Alright, so we've talked a bit before about the different pieces of a division problem, so this is just going to be a quick review. This should already be in your vocabulary notebook. Dividend is the number in a division problem being divided. So again, like the dad here is the dividend, he's being divided. But actually in the problem, it's that first number listed, the top number listed, or the inside of the long division problem. The divisor is the number in a division problem that is doing the dividing. And again, that would be everything that is dividing the dad. And in this case, 6, 5, and 12, so the last, bottom, or outside number. And then the quotient is the answer to that division problem. So if we were to go through and actually solve these problems, 7, 9, and 11 would be our quotients. Okay, so when you're dividing a decimal by a whole number, we're always going to use regular long division. So we've talked about long division before. But what we're going to do is we're going to set it up. We know that the divisor goes on the outside and the dividend goes on the inside. So in this case, we have the divisor, which is 5, and the dividend, which is 75 hundredths. Now we need the divisor to be a whole number in order to not have to mess around with the decimal. In this case, it is a whole number, so we don't have to do any changing. So again, I go ahead and I put up my chairs, and I bring my decimal straight up right away. And I do that so that way it doesn't get misplaced, and then I can put my chairs up around it. And so here I go and I do my steps. So remember, dirty monkeys smell bad. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. So 5 goes into 0, 0 times. 0 times 5 is 0, and I subtract. And I get 0, bring down the 7. Don't forget that bring down. 5 goes into 7 once. 1 times 5 is 5. I subtract, and I get 2. And I have to bring down the 5. 5 goes into 25 5 times. 5 times 5 is 25. I subtract that and I get 0. So in this case, my answer is 0 and 15 hundredths. Alright, so if you'd like to, go ahead and pause and try this one on your own, or you can keep going with me as we walk through it. So we have the divisor on the outside, dividend on the inside. I put up my chairs, bring that decimal straight up, Okay, and like we said, it's important to know where our numbers go because if I had even shifted these a little bit to the left or right and had the decimal between the 1 and the 5 or after the 5 or before the 1, that would have given me an incorrect answer. So here I know 3 goes into 2 0 times, so I subtract and I get 2. Now I know typically we like to skip this one because we know that it doesn't go into 2, but since there's a decimal there, you want that 0 there because it has to be there anyways to make your answer correct. So 3 goes into 25 8 times. 8 times 3 is 24. I subtract and I get 1. And I bring down the 12. 3 goes into 12 4 times. 3 times 4 is 12. I subtract and I get 0. So my answer is 0 and 84 hundredths. Alright, so dividing by a whole number is nice, but we don't always get whole numbers. So now we're dividing by another decimal. So the steps are still the same. We're still going to set it up as long division, so the divisor on the outside, the dividend on the inside. But then that next step is going to be to move the decimal on the outside number. Now instead of saying outside number, we're going to say on the divisor. So we're going to move the decimal on the divisor over until it gets to the division symbol. More specifically, until it turns into a whole number. Alright, so what this means is, I have 1 and 2 tenths, 
I'm going to move the decimal to the right on my divisor, one space, so it becomes a 12. I could even do this before I turn it into long division as long as I know which piece is the divisor. And then I have to know that whatever I do to my divisor, I have to do to my dividend. So move your decimal not on your inside number, but on your dividend. as many times as you moved your divisor decimal. Okay, so now what that means for me is that I've moved it once in my divisor, so I move it once on my dividend, and then I go ahead and I divide. I know 12 goes into 36 three times. 3 times 12 is 36. I subtract and I get 0. So yes, I could pull the decimal straight up, but since we always want to give our answers in the best form possible, we know that the answer here would just be 3. Okay, so this is the most confusing part because sometimes we like to just move the decimal as many times as we feel like or as many times as kind of visually makes sense to us. So looking at this problem, how many places do you move the divisor's decimal? Well, I know that this is my divisor, and so I'm going to move it one, two, three times to the right. So I moved it three times to the right, so now this became 3,456. So then now the question becomes, how many places do you move the dividends decimal? Well, since I moved it three places here, I have to move it three places here. So one, two, now typically this is where students will stop because there's no more numbers. You have to move it that extra space and add the zero. Otherwise, you are not dividing correctly. So I still move it three spaces. And so my new problem should look like 7,340 divided by 3,456. All right, so let's go ahead and try a couple together. We're going to do one dividing by a whole number and one not a whole number. So in this case, I have 3 and 98 hundredths divided by 4. Well, I'm going to, just to practice, circle my divisor and square my dividend. Divisor, dividend. There's no decimal. It's already a whole number, so I can leave it and put it on the outside. I have 3 and 98 hundredths. I don't have to do any moving of the decimal, so I have three. Bring my decimal straight up, and nine and eight. So four goes into three zero times. Zero times four is zero, and I get three, and I bring down the nine. Now I know that four goes into 39 nine times. Nine times four is 36 and then I subtract and I get 3 so I bring down the 8 4 goes into 38 again 9 times I subtract 36 and I get 2 now typically here is where we stop and we say oh okay well it's 99 hundredths remainder 2 but when you're dividing with decimals you keep going since the number is after the decimal, so since we're working behind the decimal, we know that we can add zeros to the end of a number and it doesn't change the value as long as it's after the decimal, which in this case it is, or as long as we add a decimal and then that zero. So we want to get an exact answer here. So I add the zero and then I, and I'm actually going to show this in green so you remember that it was different. And then I go about my same steps. 4 goes into 20 five times. 5 times 4 is 20. I subtract and I get 0. So my answer is 0 and 995 thousandths. All right, so let's do this again. I have my divisor 
and my dividend. My divisor goes on the outside, my dividend on the inside, and this is kind of sloppily written for the first part since I know I have to move decimals first. So I'm moving my decimal twice to the right on my divisor, so I have to move it twice to the right, and I have to add a zero on my dividend. So then now this becomes 12, and this becomes 12,260. And again, put up our boxes, put up our chairs. So I know 12 goes into 1. It doesn't, and since there's not a decimal there, I can just put an x. 12 goes into 12 once. 1 times 12 is 12. I subtract and I get 0, and I bring down the 2. So now I actually get where there's just 2, so 12 goes into 2 0 times. 0 times 12 is 0. I subtract that and I still get 2. I bring down the 6. 12 goes into 26 twice, and that's 24, and I get 2 left over, bring down the 0, 12 goes into 20 once, minus 12 is 80. Now let's see, how many times does 12 go into 80? Well, I know that 12 times, let's go with 5, is going to be 60. So I need to go more than that. So I think if I go times 7, it might be too much. So I'm going to go ahead and try 6. 2 times 6 is 12. Carry the 1 is 72. Now if I go another 12, that'll put me over 80. So I know that I can't do that. So I have to add a 0. add a box, and that's where the 80 came from. So I'm sorry, I jumped a step here. I forgot to tell you to add the 0, add the box, and that's where I get the 80. And so I know that 12 can go into 80 six times, and I subtract 72, and then I get 10 minus 2 is 8. So I'm going to add a 0 again, bring it down, and I get 80. Well, it's still going to go into 80 six times, and that's still going to be minus 72, which is going to still be 8. So now you'll notice here that there's a pattern. So what we do in this case, and I apologize, I had to add a decimal here, I'm sorry, here, because I forgot to add that decimal in when I added that extra zero, and I have to do that. So my decimal was here, so I'm placing it there now, and then that's where it goes. So now I'm noticing that this is just repeating, so my answer is actually going to be 1,021, and then I have 6 tenths repeating. Actually, this should be 10,216 and 6 tenths repeating, since it's always going to become 80 and be 80 minus 72, which is always going to be 8, which will always turn into 80. So this cycle is always going to repeat itself. All right, so you have a couple problems here. I want you to answer how many places do you move the divisor's decimal and the dividend's decimal. And then for these problems, I want you to circle the dividend and put a square around the divisor and then find the quotient. As always, if you have any questions, be sure to email me or write them down so we can go over them in class.